Hello everyone, my name is Sandra Scarrett and I am an instructor within the School of Nursing at York University and I am here today with my colleague Brenda Orzetti who uh, we're going to interview today on her roles of the clinical educator and the clinical instructor and she has extens extensive experience in both these roles. And the reason we're having these lecture series is to inspire our students to get an understanding of what the various rules are for nursing um, once they graduate. And so it's a, it's a way to uh, teach nurses um, about of the variety of roles that are available to them when they graduate. Hello everybody, I'm Brenda and first I'll talk to you about the CI role or clinical instructor role. Um, some of the major features of this role would be to plan the clinical learning activities of your student nurses, keeping in mind that you have to have a gradual progression um, in the, in the assignments that you have planned for your students, and also understand that your students aren't all going to learn at the same speed or in the same way. So you have to be flexible. Um, in providing variety in experiences for them to practice their clinical skills. You need to have a supportive environment and very trusting environment, be patient and have knowledge of how to teach the students in this environment. Um, you have to plan assignments that help the students transfer their knowledge and meet their learning needs and develop them into competent nurses. Um, you would have to be available at all times on the unit for your students uh, during the clinical rotations and be an excellent role model. Um, you should have a lot of knowledge and be seen as an expert in the area that you'll be teaching in. So be very proficient in the technology that's used, whether it's IV pumps, uh, heart monitors, um, and have a wide range of knowledge for the uh, patient population in which you're teaching on that unit. Um, you're going to be the liaison um, between all the staff and interprofessional team and the student nurses, so you should have excellent communication skills and judgment and knowledge of the unit that you're teaching on. Uh, in order to become a clinical instructor, uh, these positions are usually contract uh, one semester at a time, which could be a pro or a con, depending on where you're at in your career. It allows you to try out the role to see if you even like it, but the con would be maybe you want a full-time position. So for the majority of colleges and universities across the region, it is a contract one term at a time. Um, not to say that you can't have several contracts all in one semester and make a career out of the role. It's ideal that you have a master's degree. Uh, it is preferred, but a lot of nurses have a baccalaureate degree with a minimum of at least five years of experience to 10 years in order to be that expert, competent nurse. Um, a lot of times the paperwork that's required and the evaluation um, is somewhat similar where you'll be writing and evaluating the stu student's performance on a midterm and final evaluation. Quite often the students will have pass-fail documents that they'll have to submit in your grade, such as maybe a learning plan, um, reflective paper or care plans. They might have to put a portfolio together or demonstrate a, a teaching plan, uh, uh, evidence of their learning plan is a teaching seminar with their colleagues. Usually the course weight for teaching clinical would only be about 10%. Um, I think I'll speak about the educator role now. I see the uh, nurse educator role as a full-time position as part of the leadership team on a department, in a department. So in order to qualify for an educator role, a master's is the minimum requirement with at least 10 years of experience and you would be seen as an expert uh, prior to even uh, having the interview for this position. So you'd have expert knowledge. Uh, expert communication skills and be seen as a leader and great communicator and quite mature. For both roles you're needing to be a team player and an eagle in a sense that you're working autonomously and independently but yet you still have to fit in with the group and the team. Um, usually educators have national certifications such as the Canadian Nurses Association national certification that way. 
Um, you have to work really well with your manager and the interprofessional team and your staff nurses. You would be responsible for developing an orientation program specific to your department and as well as a corporate orientation. So you usually have dual responsibilities where you're delivering and teaching a corporate-wide orientation program as well as a unit-specific orientation program. Um, there, there's also a point in time uh, assistance required for the nurses on the unit, whether it's technical issues that they're running into um, or difficulties with uh, learning how to do an admission or new procedures um, or different drugs and whatnot. So you'd have to put together in-service orientation and in-service workshops uh, to help facilitate the care of the patients as unusual and strange procedures and diagnoses come across the um, unit. Um, you're also responsible for maintaining the standards of care in your department and that's a direct reflection of how you're performing as a nurse educator um, having to do with criteria for selecting those that are hired onto your unit and how they maintain their competencies and their skills. So you might be putting on an annual refresher or blitz. Uh, you might be responsible for certification of certain skills. Uh, for example, I used to teach the nurses how to become a charge nurse and then how do you become the code blue nurse and how do you manage the biphasic defibrillator and certifying them on the delegated controlled act of defibrillating. Um, so things like that or maybe you have a lot of central venous access devices and making sure the nurses are familiar with the variety and of what these look like and how to maintain and access these different different lines. Um, so I see the educator role as a sort of a step up from the clinical instructor role but there's a lot of the same skills are required of the CI and the educator role. Instead of dealing with nursing students as a CI, you, um, the educator would be dealing with staff nurses. So they're both uh, requiring similar expertise in maturity, leadership, uh, clinical excellence and knowledge, um, and technical knowledge. And um, I should mention that through COSIN, the Canadian Association of Schools of Nursing, there are certificate courses, uh, there are online courses, uh, to become certified as a clinical nurse instructor and as an educator. Um, so I highly encourage you, if you're interested in pursuing a career in either avenue, to consider taking a certification course. Um, I have taken them and this is one of the books that is covered in the clinical instructor workshop course. Um, and it's an excellent resource, this book. And two of our faculty members, Karen Page Couture and Pat Bradley, they run the clinical nurse educator uh, certification course. Um, so I'm very proud to have some in-house faculty working on those national certifications. There are also some ONA documents that you should be apprised of if you're um, teaching in these roles. Um, the ONA documents, the CNO documents, College of Nurses of Ontario documents, are called Practice Guidelines Supporting Learners and it talks about the accountabilities that are uh, required of nurse educator roles and in the preceptor role and how to, present, how to support learners. So thank you very much for listening to this brief webinar on the clinical instructor role, CI role, and the nurse educator role. I hope you can consider these career options in the future. Bye.